number. Oh, goodness gracious. Number 26. This is called Radians and the Unit Circle. We're about to kick things off super hardcore here. So in the beginning of the handout assignments, it talks about how, excuse me, wow. In a full rotation, pretend there's a circle here. Of course, we, of course, uh, not of course, but we could like label each point on the circle. That's literally the worst circle ever. Hold on. Ah, technology. There we go. Look at this. Boom. Okay. Uh, every point in the circle can be identified as an angle, if you didn't know this. Um... This would be considered zero degrees. This would be considered 90 degrees, 180 degrees. In, rota in terms of rotation, we rotate counterclockwise. Again, this is just your standard degrees of angles. And we could measure angles in a circle Rotating counterclockwise. This would be, ooh, how good your math right now? What's this? Down here, what's this directly down here? I don't know if you could see my cursor. Close. 270. 270 degrees. Um, so, which we can call this 45 right here between that. But what we're here to do is discover or at, at least understand that there's another way to measure angles. It's called a radian. It's kind of like centimeters and feet or miles and kilometers or degrees Fahrenheit versus degrees Celsius. In angles, we can have degrees or radians. Radians exists because uh, much of higher science no longer deals with degrees anymore for, for whatever reason, um, such as physics. Um, they deal with purely radians once you get into like higher studies of physics, like AP physics, or even higher than that. Um, we like radians because, I don't even know how to explain why we like radians. I personally, <laughs> I personally don't, um, don't mind either one, but today's lesson just, we're just learning that it exists. Okay, so. In the world of radians, zero degrees is the same thing as zero radians. There's no particular symbol for it, except the fact that it's just a decimal or a weird number. Now, here is the huge kicker. 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. Jeff Exotic, that's, that's Alex, right? Okay. By figuratively guessing or logical induction, what? how many radians is 360 degrees? Two pi. If 180 is one pi, then the full rotation is two pi. Thank you, Brittany. 360 degrees. Now, there is a conversion here you could use, but for now, let's let's try to do this by just guessing. 
Okay. Okay, since Brittany, you you just responded. I have full confidence that if you think about it, you could tell me what five, 45 degrees is going to be. How many radians is that? Oh no. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's let's back burner, let's back up. Okay, how about 90 degrees? You're close, Isabel. What's 90? Half a pi or pi over 2. Very good. We could say pi over 2 or half a pi, but it's the same thing. So then, what is 45 degrees? Okay, we kind of jumped the gun there on with the 45. We should have gone to 90 first. There we go. A quarter pi or pi over four. Same thing, one fourth, but I know you meant pi over four. So essentially, it's parts of a fraction. As to why the top half is a pi and not the whole thing, that's just the way you decided to uh define it as as 180 degrees this is the main conversion right here that we use what is one single pi and it's 180 degrees now we could there is a ratio formula we could use here and miss fishberg wants you guys to discover it but since you are here here is the actual conversion i'm going to tell you so the way we can convert radians to degrees or vice versa is this little formula here First of all, to change minutes into hours, you could have minutes over 60. Wait a minute. I don't even, wait. Minutes over, why am I forgetting how to do that? Minutes over 60 equals one over hour? Okay, I should have reviewed my, my, my ratios. Screw it. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, here we go. Degrees divided by 180 is the same thing as the radians divided by pi. This is the conversion. So we're going to use this conversion over here. Let's say I wanted to convert. Um, Let's go 210 degrees into radians. How many radians is that? Well, let's first think about where 210 degrees is. If this is the angle, the bottom part of the angle, and we're rotating counterclockwise like so. Okay, I don't know how this is going to work because of the delay, but I'm going to go really slow. You tell me when to stop when you think I have rotated 210 degrees. Going slow. Here we go. Going slow. Oh, okay, okay. I think we got it. Okay. That's about 210 degrees right there. What we want to know is how many radians is that? So in red, I'm going to put radians. This is zero radians. It's also two pi radians because we rotate all the way around and get the same position. This is also pi over two. This is also pi. This is also, I'll leave 270 for a second. We want to know exactly how many radians is that. So the way we use this conversion is D represents the degrees. So I'm going to literally replace the D with 210 degrees divided by 180 degrees and make it equal to R divided by pi. And we're going to solve for R. Let me check my email though, because I might have messed up, messed up the password. Like, if there's some students like, "Hey, yo, where's the password to the?" 
Ah, oh, crap. See, I just predicted. I do not see the link. Check Google Calendar. You've been invited there. I thought I had a password. Isn't it Viernes? Crap. Okay. No password? Okay. That is a student named Alex. Okay. How do we solve for R here? We're going to cross multiply first. We get 210 degrees pi equals 180R. Now, the pi is kind of weird. Vierna should always work as the password. Uh, I'm going to divide both sides by 180. You might notice, Mrs. Vierna, what about that pi? The pi is part of our answer. So technically, my answer is 210 over 180 pi. However, we're not a bunch of bozos. We're going to reduce that fraction down all the way that we can. So 210 over 180 reduces nicely down to 7 pi over 6. Very good. R is 7 six of a pi or seven pi over six in your homework this week you'll be asked to convert a whole bunch of degrees into radians but using this conversion should work let's do one more just for clarity so let's actually do two more how much time do i got okay i have a meeting at two so let's do, how about 135 degrees into radians? And then let's change, how about uh, 11? Nope, no, let's make it easier. Let's go three. No, nope, I don't like that either. <laughs> let's go five pi over four into degrees. So if you are writing this down on your paper, I'm going to write 135 divided by 180. And it's always 180. Equals r over pi. And solve for r. Remember, pi is part of your answer and try to reduce the resulting fraction the best you can. So it's 135 over 180 pi equals r. What did it reduce to? Don't have calculators on hand. <laughs> um, 3 pi over 4. Very good. Or 3 fourths pi equals r. Now we have radians for the second one, which is now changes. Now we don't know what D is, but we know the radian. It's five pi over four. Which looks kind of funky. Somehow you have to solve for degrees D in this weird looking proportion. Looks very weird. However, 
one thing we notice is this simplifies nicely into something. The way fractions work is this pi actually cancels with that pi. So all you're really left with D over 180 equals 5 over 4. And we're going to solve that very simply so by cross multiplying what's 5 times 180? That is. Can't do that in my head right now. 3, 6, 7, 20 plus 180. 900 something <laughs> yeah thanks <laughs> divide both sides by four d is 200 something thank you to 25 degrees cool that is how we convert from radians and whatnot believe it or not this is not the tough part of the lesson here is where things are going to get super dicey. I always get nervous with this lesson, especially the fact that I'm now teaching this lesson remotely. But here we go. On your paper, if you are following along, what you want to first draw is an XY plane, like a big one. You know what? We honestly only need the top right hand quarter for now um here's what i mean where's my eraser we don't really need the bottom part we're only going to be using the first quadrant really Ooh, i didn't know i had this we're going to be using this area mostly right for today okay also what we want to draw to is a circle like earlier I mean, you, yours might not have my, my your circle might not be particularly as big as my circle here, but it's big. Now, this is called the unit circle. The reason why we say unit circle is because its radius, Mr. Green has learned how to spell, its radius is equal to 1 by that, should pick on someone who has not been participating. That's yeah, okay. Let's just move on. I only have 30 minutes left. Actually, no. Only because, Alex, you're a cool dude. If the radius is 1, what is the coordinate of this? The xy coordinate of that. If the radius of the entire circle is 1, what is that coordinate? Blank, comma, blank. What is the x, comma, y? Better not be watching TV, Alex, or whatnot. One comma one, you're close. Your X is correct. What's the Y though? There you go. One comma zero. Which makes this point. Hell yeah. Zero comma one. Okay. Um, the, on the unit circle, we call those terminal points, basically a point on the unit circle. There's an infinite amount of terminal points, just the term itself, terminal points. Now, here is what I would like to do. Whew, here we go. Let's pick this point here. And we want to know what is the terminal point here now. Now, we, there's actually no 
it's not one comma something. We know the radius is one, but that we don't exactly know how long that is. First things first, I will tell you that to figure out what this is, is if we could figure out how long this is, this is going to tell us how long y is, or what is y. That's going to be y. I should use a different color. Let's use blue. This is y. And this is how long x is going to be. This is going to be x. If we know these two values, we will know the coordinate, the terminal point of that point. The question is, how the heck do we figure out how long those both are? Well, you need to be told two things. First things first, it's not a coincidence that this creates a triangle. <sighs> and the second thing I need to tell you, actually there's three things. The second thing I need to tell you is, what if I told you that this is 30 degrees? Could you find the other two sides? Manny? Could you find the other two sides? It certainly is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. However, could you still find the other two sides, X and Y? What are we missing? We need to know at least one of the sides to finish this. Uh, yes, thank you. I was... Hoping someone would say it. Yes. Now, uh, wait. Let's see who's here. Oh, Brittany, your friend Jamie's here. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna see if she could guess it. Now she's probably like, oh, fudge. Okay, Jamie, I know you're gonna get it right. How long is the hypotenuse? Please don't. Try not to type it in if your name is not Jamie. How long is the hypotenuse? Hint. The hypotenuse is the same thing as something as part of the circle. Uh, I don't know if that was a good hit. How much you want to bet she's AFK? That means away from computer, away from keyboard. Okay, someone help. <laughs> I am here. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, the radius of the whole circle is one. So how long is the hypotenuse? Not four. Notice that from this distance to here is one. From this distance to the right side is the radius is one. So how long is it from here to the edge of the circle? Go ahead, Isabel. It's one. It's the radius. This is also a radius. This, this hypotenuse is 1. Why? Again, because that line I drew as a hypotenuse is also a radius as well. We should know that the radiuses of the entire circle are all 1. From here to here is 1. From here to here is 1. There's also a name for this also. This is called the reference angle. Uh, 
Okay. So how does that help us? Well, what we can do is blow up the triangle down here. And if it's a 30, 60, 90, we just learned how if we know one of the sides, we know the we could figure out what the other two sides are. How long is this side? You guys see my cursor, right? According to a 30, 60, 90 triangle, how long is this side? Okay, we apparently forgot 30, 60, 90 triangles already. Okay. This is going to be one half. It's half as long as the hypotenuse. Oh, thanks, guys. Cool. The, op the, the angle opposite of the 30 degrees is half as long as the hypotenuse. The 60 degrees would be taking this value one half and multiplying it by root three. So this is one half times root three, which gives me root three over two. So this coordinate is one half. No, root three over two, comma, one half. What's the cosine of 30 degrees in this case here? And what is the sine of 30 degrees? If we use this unit circle, it is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which in this case here would be one root three over two. This would be one half. Okay. I'm going to pick another point. Oh, goodness gracious. Come on. Super funky, but this is another triangle. We want to know the coordinates of this point right here, this point right here. Now, what we need to know is, is what is the reference angle for this other triangle? The reference angle is now 60 degrees. This is very similar to, actually not similar, it's exactly the same as the triangle that um, we just drew. The only difference is now the reference angle is 60 degrees, and it's, it's still a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's just been turned. So without much work, how, how tall is this? This is still one. How tall is it? That's the how the hypotenuse is. How tall is it, though? The big hint again is it's very, it's exactly the same thing as the other triangle, just a flip root three over two. That means the bottom part is one half, which means the X values have switched. They're basically the same thing. Uh, this is one half comma root three over two. It's the same triangle. Okay. 
So for now, before I continue, the unit circle is a bizarre tool or object that allows us to figure out the sines and cosines of particular angles. For instance, without a calculator, before the calculators existed, this unit circle was actually used. For instance, they know the cosine of 30 degrees without a triangle, without a calculator, they know immediately it's roots 3 over 2. There was no thing, there was no scientific calculators back in the day of which this was created. They could certainly estimate the square root of three and divide it by two and figure out an estimate of what that is versus a scientific calculator telling you exactly what it is. Now, the problem with the unit circle is it's very confined to particular degrees. In other words, we can only find degrees like 30. We can only find degrees that are special right triangles or or easier than that. Um, so let me um, let me go to a new page here. And sadly enough, I'm going to draw another dang unit circle. Good news is, if you are taking pre calculus, we learn this all over again, but much more quickly. So take this as just a preview, and it's, it's if you are watching this video, or obviously you're here live, this is not something, again, anyone will ever be able to be perfect act overnight. But if it's really simple for you right now, okay, awesome. But that's not a lot of students, no matter who you are. Um, here we go. So we wanted, we did three triangles, we did two triangles. There's another triangle in the first quadrant. If I wanted to do this point here, I want to know that coordinate. And for me, for this to work, I have to tell you what the angle is. And this, ooh, anyone want to guess what the angle is? We had a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We had a 60, 30, 90 triangle. What's this triangle going to be? It's going to be a 45, 45 degree triangle. Cool. The radius is still one, Jamie. So what we want to know is what the heck is my X and Y going to be? This one's tricky, and we did this at the end of last week's lesson pretty quickly, and I'm going to teach it again. So in a 30-60-9, a 45-45 triangle, that we know the pattern is this is X, this is X, this is X root 2. The problem is that the radius is 1 excuse me, the hypotenuse is one. We don't know what the other two sides might be. So what we're gonna do is if the radius is one, we wanna figure out what X and X are. We don't know what X is. So we're gonna set one and set it equal to X root two. And I'm going to solve for x here. Again, we're trying to figure out what these other two sides are. I should have used a different letter than x, but whatever. By dividing both sides by root 2, we get 1 divided by root 2 is x. Now, technically, that is our answer. But in the world of this kind of math, we don't like root 2 on our denominator. So then we learn how to remove it from the denominator by multiplying the top by root 2 and the bottom by root 2. This is called rationalizing the denominator, which the, bot, the top gives us root 2. The bottom, root 2 times root 2, is the square root of 4, which is just 2, which tells us this coordinate is root 2 over 2. This is root 2 over 2. This also tells us another thing. Without a calculator, what is the cosine of 45 degrees? What is the sine of 45 degrees? Don't go in your calculator and type it in. It's going to give you a decimal 0.777. Blah, 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 blah. 
we could use the unit circle to answer this question. What is the cosine of 45 degrees? <laughs> group two over two. They're both root two over two. So the conclusion, what we're supposed to discover in our um, assignment this week is every x value is equal to the cosine of whatever angle they give you. Every y value is equal to the sine of every value they give you. And tangent is the opposite the opposite over the adjacent, dividing them. Ooh, what's tangent of 45? One. Um, how many minutes I got? Oh, okay. Let's... I never really do this, but we're going to do it. We're going to go to the other quadrant, meaning over here. I wasn't rude. I know you're just trolling. It's funny. <laughs> the reference here is still 45 degrees, but the coordinates change. And we don't need to go through the process again because the triangle on the right actually tells us what this answer is, but with one slight change, one tiny change. What's negative, Brittany? What is negative? I know, but what? What are they both negative? Is the x negative? Is the y negative? Are they both negative? There we go, Manny. The x coordinate. And Brittany, you both got it. The x. Cool. This is negative root 2 over 2. And this is also root 2 over 2. Okay. Now, this is pre calculus. Here's the pre calculus part. the reference angle is the same thing as the actual angle. Here's what I mean. Here's the reference angle is 45 degrees. Ugh, I don't, dude, if someone gets this right, I'm gonna be very happy. Like you have no idea. The reference angle here is 45 degrees. The reference basically means the angle of the triangle closest to the x-axis. However, the actual angle is this, rotating counterclockwise to the same angle. What is that angle? So the, the, the red rotation line I just drew, what is this angle? Aiden. Hey. So what does this tell us? If the reference angle is the same thing as the actual angle, everyone here should be able to tell me, not everyone, maybe not everyone, but we can now answer this question. The sine of 135 degrees without a calculator, what is it? What is the sine of 135 degrees? Keeping in mind of everything we've written on our board right now, what is the sine of 135 degrees?
Root 2 over 2. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, what is the cosine of 135 degrees? The cosine. You got, you got it, Rachel. You got it. You got it. You got this. Wait, are you here? Negative what? <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> I thought, yes, negative root 2 over 2. Perfect. Which makes the tangent of 135 degrees negative 1. We're basically going to divide those two together to get negative 1. That's the gist in a nutshell. But a lot of students are still going to need a lot of help with this. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm still going to just let you guys do the assignment for the week. Whether you wait till Monday or not, it doesn't matter to me. But I highly, highly suggest come to office hours Monday. Usually I have them around the same time as now um, to really deal with this. But very, very impressive if this makes sense, sort of. Even sort of. Like most students, no, not even most. Most students come out of this lesson like, oh, my gosh. And then after some time, they're like, okay, I kind of get it. But, like, even if you, like, kind of sort of get it, that's good. Because teaching this at the math three level is very, very difficult. Because we, norm we used to never teach this, but it's part of the new curriculum. Um, this was only reserved for students in math three plus or honors pre-calculus or, uh, or regular pre-calculus. Um, do I have time for one other tidbit? Yeah, we do. We have time. So remember, we just discussed that this is true. This is true. And this is true. OK, you might be like, Mr. Fairness, wait a minute. This is oh, this is adjacent over hypotenuse. Ah, here. But the hypotenuse here is always equal to one hypotenuse. Right, Jamie? The hypotenuse is equal to one, which means the rate. I'm sorry. Okay, I won't I won't I won't pick on you ever again, ever. <laughs> uh so the question is here is a point. I know I'm just kidding. Uh zero negative one. That's the point zero negative one. Okay. Answer this question, friends. What is the cosine of 270 degrees? What is the sine of 270 degrees? What is the tangent of 270 degrees? Also, what is the cosine of pi radians? <gasps> sine of pi radians <gasps> and tangent of pi radians. <gasps> we can also answer this question in radians. But first, we have to understand how to answer the first part. 270 degrees. Well, um, this is one zero, this is zero one, this is negative one comma zero. 
What is the cosine of 270 degrees? Not quite. So what we need to know, there we go. Negative one, zero. What's the tangent, Brittany? Well, time out. Before we, before, let's see Aiden first. You need to see that 270 degrees is down here. This is 270 degrees. And we know the X and Y coordinate already. And according to this over here, cosine of 270 degrees is the X value, which gives us zero. The sine of 270 degrees, which is the Y value, is negative one. What's the tangent of 270 degrees? It's not negative one. Okay, Isabel, what does that mean? Negative one over zero. What does that mean? Who's got, if you have a scientific calculator right now, if you do, <laughs> if, you, if you do, type in tan 270 degrees and make sure you are in ray, uh, degree mode. It says error. Why? Because. Why? Why is it? <clears throat> Why is it error? Why is it error? Isabel said she got negative one over zero. But your calculator goes error, beer, buddy. <laughs> okay. I. I cannot, um, yes, we cannot divide by zero. This is double X. This means undefined. We're not going to write error because the calculator should write error, but tan of 270 degrees is just an undefined value. We know it's negative one divided by zero, which we cannot divide by zero. Can't do. Let's go to cosine. Now, you might be thinking, Miss Verna is pi. Where on the unit circle is pi? That's not degrees. I know where zero degrees is. This is 90 degrees up here. This is 180. This is 270 degrees. Where the heck is pi radians? Do we remember from earlier today? Where is pi? It's at 180 degrees, so it's basically this point here. Let me do that in a nice, let's go with green. Right there. It's the same thing as 180 degrees, which is why in your calculator, there is a radian button. If you typed in the radian button and you put cosine pi, it'll give you the answer of negative one, zero, what is tan of pi? Zero. Here you get zero over negative one. We can do, yes we can. Si se puede, we can do zero divided by negative one. You can divide by anything by any number other than zero. The top number can be zero as much as it wants. But if the bottom number is ever zero, that's a big no-no. Also, by the way, last thing, I have to go to my meeting now. They're going to get mad at me for being late. <laughs> Can I do this? Can you do zero divided by zero? Can you do zero divided by zero? Did you try that out in your calculator, Aiden? Can you divide zero divided by zero, and does it give you zero? Does it give you one? Because you might argue, no, you can't. You might, wait a minute, Mr. Vernon, three over three is one, two over two is one, nine over nine is one, uh, man over man is one, question mark. 
This is the only one you can't do. Can't do. No, can't do. You still can't do it. Zero can never be down there. Okay. Be very weary of the lesson. Even with this expansive less lesson today, be weary of this assignment. I mean, um, it's pretty tricky, but um, if there are any dire questions during the week, you can always email me and I can, we could do, I could do tutoring if.